We all have a moment in our lives when our lives can change in an instant. And if we live long enough, we'll have several. The day my life changed forever was January 7th, 1993, when my 20 year old son, my husband's stepson, Eric, drove out into the desert outside of Phoenix. He smoked two cigarettes, he wrote a note, and he shot himself. I did not know if I would go on living. But with the help of God, with family, with friends, with support groups, with writing a letter to Eric every day in a journal and walking, I slowly climbed out of the well of grief. Eight long years later, I had another instant change. Well, not exactly an instant. It was more like seven hours. I walked a marathon. And just a little while after that, I heard the still, small voice of God say, Iris, it's time for you to walk in memory of your son. And this journey, this pilgrimage that you will go on, will change your life in ways that you could never imagine. <laughs> when I told my husband Jim, all he said was, okay, we'll do this together. So what we would do is we would take this journey from where my son was born, raised and buried, a little town about 25 miles east of Cleveland, Ohio, and I would walk and bicycle to where he died in Phoenix, Arizona, about 2,000 miles. We would divide the trip up into thirds over a 14-month period. And so we planned the journey. And we began at the end of August of 2002. I had just celebrated my 54th birthday. We started at my son's gravesite and I bent down to kiss the black granite stone that said his name, the date of his birth and death, and he gave us love and laughter. And then my husband and our new dog, Biscuit, and I started walking. My husband would go five miles ahead and wait for me, and along the way he would find places to eat and places for us to sleep for the evening. And all I had to do was walk and bicycle. And I did. I walked all the way through Ohio, across Indiana, across <coughs> Illinois, until we reached St. Louis, Missouri. And I saw the, the gateway arc and the sun was shining so brightly on it. It looked like angel wings that were ready to fly. And by that time, I felt like flying. So then we returned home and rested for about five months. And the second journey we started in June of 2003, driving back to St. Louis. And I started walking from the exact same spot that I left off that last September. This was going to be the longest part of the trip it was also the most arduous, and it was also the one that I wanted to give up. The feeling of depression and sadness began when we visited the Oklahoma National Memorial, where 168 people died in the federal building in the bombing in 1995. We gaze at the field of chairs. It's 168 chairs that are placed where those people sat on the last day of their lives. Mm -hmm. And I thought about all the families and all the people whose lives changed in that instant, that day. And my heart was heavy. And I wanted, to, I wanted to give up. I thought, death is all around me. Death is still with me. 
and I'm tired. And what am I doing? Why am I doing this? Why am I, why am I traveling this journey? And, and, and is, it, is it making any difference? Is it making any difference to me? Is it making any difference to my world or, or anyone in it? And I miss my friends at home. And I'm so, so tired. I want to go home. Tonight, I will tell Jim that I want to go home. So as I laid soaking in the bathtub and working up the courage to tell Jim that I wanted to quit, he said, I have to read this email to you from Sue, who we met several days earlier. And the subject line read, you may have saved a life. And Sue had sent out an email to her Oklahoma Route 66 Association telling them about our journey and walking for suicide awareness. And one of her friends responded and told her that he had contemplated suicide many, many times and he was ready to give up again. And he shouted out to God, please God help me not to die. And then he read our email and he told Sue, this is God's work in action. <clears throat> By the time Jim finished reading, we were both crying. We reached out to each other, and we hugged each other for a long time. And then I told him, I said, I was going to tell you today that I wanted to go home. I wanted to quit. This is God's work in action to me. He helped me remember why I'm doing this pilgrimage. So the next day, I got on my bicycle, and I started riding my bicycle again until I got to Amarillo, Texas. And again, it was time for a rest, and we drove home and rested for a couple months. The last phase of our journey began at the end of October, and I, I, rode, I rode my bicycle from the exact same spot, where I lived in Amarillo, Texas, and I rode across New Mexico, or I rode across the, pan, the rest of the panhandle of Texas from Amarillo, rode across New Mexico and into Arizona. And then I rode my bicycle through the petrified forest, the painted desert that I had read about in school, the White Mountains, and the Salt River Canyon. And then I finally, finally reached Arizona. And then I finally reached the place where Eric had died that was stated on his death certificate. I had visited there a, year, a, a month after Eric died, and it was quite a ways out into the desert south of Phoenix, and it was on a dirt road that led to nowhere. And there was a small stream that ran along the side of the road, and I remember it was so quiet, you could not, I couldn't even hear a bird sing. And now I am standing almost in the exact same spot, Lindsay Road and Hunt Highway. And now it is a highway. It's filled with streets and schools and churches and apartments and stores. It is alive just as I am alive today. And it has changed, just as I changed. And tomorrow, we will celebrate Eric's birthday right here. His birthday celebration began with me being interviewed on the local television station, talking about my journey and suicide awareness. And then we stopped to get the Arizona Republic newspaper that had a story Mother on a Healing Journey, Trekking Across the Country for Suicide Awareness. And then, the celebration. My husband, our dog, and I, my daughter, my son-in-law, and my three young grandchildren drove out to that spot, that sacred spot where Eric died. Our friends Sue and Reed and Dick were already there waiting for us all on their Harleys. My grandchildren had helped me make a cross, a descanso, a, a cross signifying where someone had died. And I had seen many of those crosses along the way. 
And every time I saw one, I thought of that person whose name was on the cross who died. And now here I have one with my son's name, with purple and white flowers wrapped around it, and notes that my grandchildren and I had written to Eric. We told stories about Eric. We shared our thoughts and our feelings about him. I said a prayer and read a poem. And then I hopped on the back of Dick's Harley and we drove down the highway back into today. And as I wrapped my arms around Dick, I could feel the tears coming down my face. And I knew that they were tears of joy, of healing, of love, and of great life. And I also knew that I would never have to visit that sacred place again.